There seemed to be a lot of stuff missing from this week's parasha. In Parashat Tetzaveh, it is the only book in the entire Torah, the only parasha, the only part of the entire Torah after Moshe is born, in which his name is not mentioned. Not only that, but of course we read the Megillah in Purim. Speaking of appearing. Hello! Hello everyone! Hello! 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 Go away! Surprise! Hello! Yeah. Okay, what was I saying? So uh, Moshe doesn't appear in Parashat Tetzaveh and Hashem's name doesn't appear in the Megillah at all. And I began wondering this week whether there was a connection between these two. Now, let's take Moshe first and foremost. There are a huge number of reasons given as to why Moshe seems to be absent from Parashat Tetzaveh. But the one that perhaps struck me most, particularly this week, is the explanation of Rav Gedal Yashar, who suggests that when you have someone in the room with you, you never use their name. We use somebody's name to call them from a distance or to call them when they're busy doing something else, to get their attention when we don't currently have their attention. And for most of the Torah, as in you know all relationships, God in a sense calls out to Moshe, God talks to him as Moshe, as someone who is not exactly with him in that moment, and he says to him, come here, it's time for us to speak. In Parashat Tetzaveh, they are so much together, they are so united, and they are so sort of already in conversation, continuing on from last week's parasha, where God began to describe the building of the tabernacle to Moshe, and then continues this week, Ve'atat Tetzaveh, and now uh, command the Bnei Israel regarding the rest of the tabernacle, that actually this is just simply a continuation of the conversation. They're already talking to each other, and therefore God does not need to address Moshe by name. But perhaps that can help us understand as to why God's name is missing from the Megillah. Of course, we read the Megillah on Friday, just before Shabbat, and God's name is not mentioned in the Megillah. And while we usually look at that as God perhaps being a little bit more distant, God being a little bit more hidden, that we have to search for the Almighty within the Purim story, within the Megillah, within the salvation that we find at the time of Purim, perhaps actually the exact opposite is true. That the reason why God's name doesn't appear was because he was closer than ever before. Because the Almighty was with us in such a strong sense that we didn't even need to call out to him by name. I think this is particularly powerful for us at a time of challenge because we may not be able to hear the name of God. Hello! Here we are again. Have you come to say hello? Abba's busy. You want to come show everyone what you're doing? What you doing? Adding background noise. Shall we stop it? <laughs> Shall we stop it for a minute just so Abba can finish? All right, we're nearly there. Perhaps we can say that the reason the Almighty's name is min missing from the Megillah is not because he was distant, not because he was hidden, not because he was covered up, but actually because he was right there with us. That just as someone who is in the same room as us, we don't need to call their name. So to the Almighty was right there with us. And in a sense, the name was not necessary. And perhaps when we're going through challenge, we can feel that same closeness. That while we don't necessarily see the Almighty, while we don't necessarily hear his name being called, perhaps that's because he's right there with us, standing next to us, listening to everything that we say and, ev and watching everything that we do. A Purim Sameach. I wish everybody a really, really happy and joyous Purim. And look forward to celebrating, hopefully, very, very soon together in person. And a Shabbat Shalom.